I've had numerous requests from a lot of people to explain my wa hot water system, uh, which is an on-demand system. And uh, it was on James' video. Uh, didn't go into it in detail. So Al and I are going to try and help explain some of the... Uh, are going to explain the system for you. Okay. I have basically three components to this system. This is the heater itself, which is a Ecotemp L5, the smallest one that this company makes. Then we have a pump down here, a flow jet. Then here we have a reservoir. That's the three pieces. So let's just start here. This is just a garden sprayer that can be purchased at big box stores, Harbor Freight. This particular one happens to be one made for marine use for, out, for showers. I had it, so that's why I used it. So this is the reservoir. This is just a half inch hose that fits in, in the old intake area. You could use just about anything. You could make your own hole. And these are very inexpensive just to buy it. This will take the water from the reservoir pump does that. By the way, there's a filter on this pump and they come with that. And this pump will produce the PSI pressure that's necessary to the water heater. <clears throat> that's the basic system and components. You can buy this heater online through Amazon or through the company or many other places uh, and get the FlowJet pump as a package deal with filter and everything so you don't have to shop around. It's the one they recommend. I did that. I bought it as a package deal. What I have done is this comes with a standard shower head. The one about yay big and has pulse and flow and all that kind of stuff. It's too much water waste. The biggest thing is it's an off and on switch that you gotta click. So you waste water trying to fiddle with that thing and it's a pain in the butt to do, so I got rid of it. This is just a piece of a hose from a dish uh, rinsing system for a house, adapted to the hose that comes with it. And it's just a nylon fitting and a little piece of half inch tubing fits right in there and works great. You could do all kinds of systems. The advantage to this is on or off right now and you don't waste a bit of water. So here is the key to the system to make these things work. Everybody complains they're too hot, they're too cold, I waste too much water, on and on and on. The reservoir is the key. Put your water into that. You turn the switch on to make this thing. It's right here. That's hot and that's off. And you put this in the top of your... These, this comes out, by the way, and all these will come with a pressurizing plunger. Don't need that anymore. Put it in there, and it takes me about two minutes to heat two and a half gallons of water to probably close to 100 degrees. Very quick. And you just feel it. Is that hot enough? Great. Then you shut it off. So you're spraying the water back into the reservoir. I am. Spraying the water back into the reservoir. It's just circulating out of the reservoir, through the pump, through the hot water heater, back to the reservoir. This controls that whole temperature problem. And also it conserves water because while you're heating water through this hose before it gets hot, it's wasted water that's normally going out the drain. So you just put it there. You lose none. It's as hot as you want it. Now you take a shower. Um, the unit itself, this is the flow, speed of the water going from the pump. This is the gas regulator from minimum to maximum for heat for the burner inside. And you'll find your sweet spot. I have found with this system here and the length of lines and everything, I keep it on max heat all the time. And I usually put it about midway when I'm heating original for to get the temperature I want. And then I drop it down to the lowest just for conserving water. And you still have plenty of PSI. You can wash anything you want. Hair, dogs, cats, whatever and it works just great. This has been in use now for a year and a half. Haven't touched it. 
The piezo igniter, by the way, works on an AD battery that fits up in here, so it goes forever. So there's no electrical wiring on this thing. All you need to do is have propane access, and that is just this line here that runs to a T to my propane system. And then the water is a continuous sealed unit. Uh, let's see, anything else? Uh, maintenance, I clean that filter. It just screws off every now and again. There's a little tiny filter in here, a little brass fitting that you can reach up here and turn and pull it out. That needs to be cleaned occasionally. Uh, but other than that, it's pretty much maintenance free and it works like a dream. And the best part of it, I have less than $200 in everything and a couple hours of labor of putting this thing together. This is a standard hose connection. I believe, I believe it's 5 8 And that goes to? And that goes to? The sprayer. The sprayer, okay. This is your water inlet from the pump. And this comes with some options. This is a quick disconnect, just like you buy for your garden hose. You can screw it in on, a, on the threads if you want, or you can disconnect it uh, for maintenance or whatever. But they give you some, a couple of these extra pieces. So that's what this one is. And then the black line is a standard propane fitting. Uh, and they give you the fitting for this end. And then you have to add this line. This uh, line doesn't come with it, just the fitting. Oh, one other little thing, if you want to, I take this out and I sit it on, in the sun like it's intended use when I first bought it. So I'll pre-warm this just so I use less electricity to heat this thing, because this thing does take seven and a half amps, but it's only for two minutes. So it's really no draw on your system. And then put this back in, and I've got you know water maybe 60, 70 degrees already. But on super cold days, when it's always in there by itself, it's still, it takes just about two minutes to heat. And the, the heat just vents out the, uh, the top. Yeah, that was the last thing. Now these are designed and, you know, they say cannot be used inside. I've used them in boats and other things like this. And it is true. You know, carbon monoxide is a problem. Uh, I had a little tiny vent here from the get-go. And I would recommend putting at least what they call a mushroom, some sort of vent, mushroom cap, little hatch thing like this, even one you made that you could over to do this. This deflector comes with it. This is removable. And it's just perfect the way it is right here. It just deflects the heat up there and it goes and, and um, you can't smell propane, you can't smell anything. And the advantage of the heat is once I heat it, I shut this off immediately and I close this back up on a cold day and it's 100 degrees up here. And uh, the shower stall is nice and warm. So on cold days you appreciate that. But I would recommend venting it. It could probably be done without it, but um, it's a little more safety. And uh, that, I think, pretty much covers it. One last thing, the Echotemp L5 is what I chose because of cost and I had some good reviews on it. You can use any on-demand water system, a small one obviously for the size that you need to put it in, but it's your choice. This works, cost was right, so you can make your own decision.